So really this is a, an, an internet bill of rights coalition meeting. We decided not to have platform speakers. Um, personally, I find the prevalence of a whole row of people on a platform doesn't get conversation going. You tend to have a series of disconnected presentations and then some questions. And what I really want to encourage this morning is a conversation between everybody. We have asked a number of people to make contributions, and I'll be coming to them. But I'm urging them that we not ask them to prepare anything. I'm hoping that they will react to what's being said around them, and the conversation develops over the course of the workshop. So I, I do want everybody to feel that you can come in. You don't feel, there's not an expert here to which you need to ask a question. We want to get your views and your contribution on how we can mainstream um, human rights in the IGF. Uh, we're going to do it in slightly two phases. The, well, the initial contributors we've invited are from the Dynamic Coalition to talk about human rights impact on their own work. We're then going to move towards the more people who can, if you like, speak about the perspective of stakeholders and see what they can contribute. Internet governance has been defined as um, the development and application by governments, business and uh, civil society in their respective roles of shared principles, norms, rules, decision-making procedures, and programs. And so the question really for me is, what is the basis, the philosophical normative basis, on which those shared principles, norms, rules, and decision-making apply? And what we're going to look at today is how human rights and human rights thinking can provide the basis for those shared principles, uh, norms, and so on. And here I want to make one distinction at the beginning. Human rights clearly are on the one hand, a set of legal instruments. There is a regime of global governance of human rights, which is one of the, in my view, one of the strongest elements of global governance, one of the few that has, one might say, thickened since 1945, where most other structures of global governance have actually thinned out. But alongside those legal norms and legal standards, human rights, in terms of often forgotten, particularly by lawyers, are also a set of values. They're, they represent an ethic. They represent something that recognizes the essential dignity and respect for human beings that ought to characterize our relations with each other. And it may be that it's productive in terms of influencing decision making by respective bodies to think about human rights as a set of values rather than as a set of legal instruments. Because obviously for companies, there's a whole different set of issues if you talk about legal norms as opposed to uh, ethical values. So and I think the other complication for many of us in the human rights world, and I come to this as a human rights person rather than a, an internet or a communications expert, is that from a human rights point of view, we're very comfortable thinking about the content of communication. We know about Article 19 protections for the right to freedom of expression. We know about questions of privacy. We know those debates very well. When it comes to the infrastructure of communications, when it comes to issues of connectivity and applications, that's where human rights thinking, I think, is much less developed. And that's an area where we need to think much more how we would apply human rights values in that kind of environment, what it would mean to the way that communication structure is developed and built to empower the populations of the world. So hopefully we can have a conversation exploring those issues. We want to focus particularly this morning on the challenges and the opportunities and how we might take the rights agenda forward within the IGF, and hopefully that will set up the Internet um, Bill of Rights Coalition this afternoon to really build on the work that we have here. So I want to start, first of all, with us, but someone from the Internet Bill of Rights Coalition, China Mystery, to just kick us off with the perspective from the Dynamic Coalition about the importance and significance of rights. And if you could perhaps turn a little bit sideways so the camera can catch you, that would be really helpful. Sure. The Dynamic Coalition uh, that has set out to bring a human rights based approach to uh, the internet. How about we turn all the chairs from the front to the floor? Let's go to the floor. Bringing together all the different uh, uh, groups. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry again. It's a, taking a human rights based approach to the internet to make it. Um, an integral part of the internet governance. Now, human rights means different things to different people, but the common theme for our diverse membership is protecting rights. Um, the IDR is bringing together all the different groups under an umbrella. 
I myself am from the private sector, uh, representing a small to medium business. Um, but the concerns are also about freedom of speech, privacy, and security. But I'm also heavily involved in humanitarian work um, of trafficking, where the fundamental rights of freedom um, itself uh, is at stake. And the internet has become a tool for wrongdoing. In both in the arenas, issues of human rights are important. Uh, the IPR coalition is first and foremost a platform facilitating collaboration between the various members groups. We want to showcase and facilitate their work. And in this context, uh, current members include civil society, NGOs, uh, private sector, and governments. And we're very happy to report that we are getting more governments signing on. So briefly, we're looking at rights uh, from three perspectives. Uh, on a social level, how people treat each other. On a service level, uh, when service providers have user issues. And infrastructure level. So the Bill of Rights platform wants to take a decentralized approach. Uh, we've done a lot of work earlier this year getting organized. Uh, we have a strong steering committee and uh, an enthusiastic chair. We're eager and ready to go and just ready to launch our website. And we invite all of you to support us. Thank you. Also organization where all the organizations can come together and work from a position of strength to build public policy. And can I come to Gary Murphy from the framework of Federal and the government? Because before we get to the specific issues in the debate in depth, it's always useful to have these basic underlying principles based on which we can articulate positions and engage with them. One of the most fundamental set of principles that we have been discussing comes from the basic uh, declaration of principles. This is, uh, this is the newer document. And in the first paragraph, it calls for a people centered, Inclusive and development oriented information society. Uh, people centered, inclusive and development oriented information society. I was uh, very happy when Andrew spoke in the beginning about the fact that when we talk about rights, some kinds of rights are more easily understood, like the right to privacy or the right to freedom of expression. But then there are some other rights which are not as well understood. And I think uh, when we look at rights, a rights perspective can actually be the theme for the entire discussion on internet governance. And that's why for us from the dynamic coalition, uh, uh, coalition on the principles of internet, we thought our work and the work of the Bill of Rights Coalition is so much in common that we should actually look at working together. And I spent a couple of minutes elaborating what I mean. Uh, from if you were actually able to look at all issues from a rights perspective, we would find that every aspect of internet governance could be covered. I should focus on those small parts that Andrew said don't get much focus and traction in general IT discussion. And uh, that is the set of what are called positive rights. We easily understand the right to privacy and the right to life, liberty, and those kind of rights. But if you're talking about inclusion, if you're talking about people-centeredness, then clearly we can't have an internet which is for the one billion, and the six billion are not really connected. And if you want to look at internet for all, which is actually the theme of Hyderabad, it can't be internet for the next billion. It has to be internet for every billion, every human being on this earth. And I wanted to draw your attention to the UN Declaration of Human Rights, Article 26, which is perhaps less known, less discussed, which says, everyone has the right to education. Education shall be free. At least the element can fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be compulsory. So there is no question of choice that you have to decide whether you should go to school or not. It's compulsory for every child to be educated and the purpose of education is that we can engage with society, we can engage with life. If you look at today's world, this article was of course framed years back. If you look at today's world, I think it's easy to accept that if somebody doesn't have any connection to the internet, if the internet is not playing a role in positively influencing somebody's life and helping them fulfill their dreams and aspirations, they are not educated in that basic sense. And therefore if you look at right to education as a basis, then we should say that right to internet should be on the same pedestal as right to education would be. And just like in most countries of the world, you, you have public schools all over the place. And whoever wants to get educated can go to the public schools and get, get an education, a basic education. Internet connectivity should also be on the same line. And we have a funny situation at ITF where I was just hearing look, uh, you stood over and talked in a main session just 20 minutes back and was saying how the needs of humanity to connect to the net, to fulfill their aspirations, to be a part of the human society cannot be in the state. 
for the profit that we need to some side of the business. And I think we should be able to say that just like public schooling across the world is something which is society's responsibility to every human being on this world, right and it should be the same. In some my position, therefore, I would like to bring in some kind of a complementing employee. I think Ralph will talk about privacy and Ralph will talk about other basic kind of rights. From my position, I would like to bring forward emphasis and strength from the need that if you want to put an inclusive or a people centered in society, then right to internet should be a basic thing. And we were discussing our own position two days back. We have right position members that are also there. About how we must really uh, bring this right agenda into the uh, agenda of the IGF as well. And how in Cairo, we should probably have a main session just focusing on right to internet. And right to internet should be the you know, theme for the IGF itself. And uh, one more, last point I want to make was. I think the notion of indivisibility of human rights is well established. You cannot privilege one set of rights over the other. In every context, when you apply the right, of course, you privilege one over the other. For example, if somebody committed homicide several number of times, the right to life of that person is suspended by society in the interest of the right to security of everybody else. So in specific context, rights are always privileged. But in a generic sense, I think it's difficult to establish that that one particular set of rights are superior to another set of rights, and that's a problem. From my position point of view, thanks for the time. I hope you'll have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, in the last few years, disability has moved from being a question of charity to a question of fundamental rights, and it's been we've seen a very significant presence of disability activists within the human rights movement. So, speaking on behalf of the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability, we have Gabriel Barrio. Gabriel. Well, this is a very brief. Uh, I appreciate very much the three uh, points that we are talking about. Uh, and uh, I was asked to talk about the strategies uh, for mainstream rights standards to know internet governance, policies, and activities. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, the Dynamic Coalition uh, uh, on Accessibility and Disability for uh, having me here. Uh, it's great that we have to create more awareness uh, that human rights principles rooted uh, in international law is an essential ethical framework uh, for everybody's benefit. It must be the responsibility of all IGF stakeholders as humans themselves acting according to those rules, but especially in favor to the vulnerable uh, members of society, our fellow humans affected with any kind of disability. Um, it's very important that we must open more space for critical social analysis to understand why technology uh, does not normally change in equal power relationships, but tends to impose them. Uh, and this is an example of the concentration media and the terrible effects on democratic processes. And uh, uh, I think it's a generalized uh, situation, especially in countries like mine. Uh, it was if we accept uh, global responsibility <coughs> for the worldwide effects of our technological and economical activities, we absolutely need interculturally and universally binding norms and work on them. Human rights provide currently the only universally available set of standards <coughs> for the dignity and integrity of all human beings. And the most important issue is uh, the powers to their enforcement are very limited, including uh, non-state non actors, since more social domains are being privatized as security, communications, environment, etc. So uh, the only solid basis we have uh, as humanity <coughs> until now uh, is articulated in the, human, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, such as the right to freely participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts, and to share in the scientific advancement on its, and its benefits, which is the Article 27. Uh, or the right to education, as my fellow said, uh, education shall be free, at least in the elementary and fundamental stages, Article 26. Of course, uh, uh, and this was uh, commented yesterday uh, at the UNESCO meeting, Article, Article 19 provides the right to the freedom to seek and receive information and ideas 
through any media and regardless of frontiers. Herewith, an international right to knowledge is confiscated. This right includes that everyone is entitled to have access to knowledge and no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of sources of knowledge. Of course, here we have freedom of expression in relation to the right to information or the communication rights. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we have to accept the real world proposes a rather different standard of achievement. Uh, and the public concern about global digital divide does not change the increasingly social inequalities that are no longer seen an, as structural problems. Um, knowledge is not freely and equally available to everyone. Um, most of the world's knowledge is not shared. The production of knowledge is increasingly privatized and commercialized. And here we have this very, very uh, small and thin uh, uh, problem with the uh, uh, intellectual property. The, so we have to talk more about this. Uh, the concentration in the marketplace has become a leading actor in determining the direction and scope of knowledge production. When knowledge is created and controlled as private property, knowledge as common good and common heritage is destroyed and destroy the balance between private ownership and common heritage of human kind. So uh, this exercise is a wonderful opportunity, uh, I, I think, to bring more to the table uh, all these uh, subjects, and we, we should talk more and try to create a different and more and more fair uh, future according to the IGF works. And everyone should have an equal access to the ICT services on the internet. This standard does require that access to and usage of ICTs are available and affordable to all without discrimination. This requirement is not met, is not met by far and current practices pose crucial obstacles <coughs> in its realization. And uh, yesterday also at the UNESCO meeting uh, it was said about the three P, you know, democracy, dialogue, and development. And uh, I can add the three A's, which is accessibility, availability, and affordability. And uh, the world needs lots of work access to that. And I, I, I bring this to the discussion table. Thank you. Awareness of the importance of rights underpinning it is linguistic diversity, and I'm really pleased to find the focus of the panel. Uh, thank you very much for inviting the Dynamic Policy for Linguistic Diversity to be part of this discussion. Um, I'm very pleased to see that uh, linguistic diversity has become uh, a, a topic that in fact is quite present in this idea and has been to some minor extent uh, for the past ideas. Uh, maybe a few words about uh, the dynamic coalition for linguistic diversity and um, uh, a key actor behind that uh, dynamic coalition, Maya. Maya is the World Network for Linguistic Diversity. It's an initiative that has been launched uh, by uh, Atalan and uh, its president, Adam Azamitesi, who, as some may know, uh, was also the president of the first phase of the World Fundamental Information Society in Geneva. Um, now, Maya um, and the Dynamic Coalition uh, have been looking at the question of rights in the sense that we can not talk about freedom of expression uh, if the majority of people cannot express themselves in their native tongue and have to, if they speak one of the international languages present in private space uh, are able to participate. Um, I've given in um, uh, discussion on multilingualism uh, organized by UNESCO uh, a few figures. Uh, if we, and maybe I'd like to recall some of them. Uh, there are currently 6,000 languages spoken in the world and only about 350 present in, in cyberspace. 
So um, connecting that to um, 